what would happen is that TGF beta is an important chemical factor released from the macrophages which is responsible to reduce the activity of the inflammation and to start calming down the immune system. So TGF beta's action really is it causes apoptosis in the T cells. So when the T cells are produced as a result of immune system activity, those extra T cells are killed and that apoptosis is done by the tumor growth factor. And similarly, it also causes the uh, neutrophils and the monocytes to reduce their phagocytosis and to reduce their cytokine secretions and that is how it down regulates or modulates the activity of immune system. This is just like, remember we talked about eosinophils and we talked about eos e eotaxins which are coming from the uh, basophils and other cells which cause the eosinophils to come over and then the eosinophils release histaminases to reduce the histamine. Similarly over here tumor growth factor is also trying to calm down the immune system. As a doctor, as a student, please do not forget, once you trigger the immune system, you have to find a way to reduce it. You have to find a way to calm it down. If you cannot, if the system cannot calm down the immune system, then we have an autoimmune disease. So if you don't have tumor growth factor beta, you cannot release it or the receptors are knocked out, then what would happen? Inflammatory system is not going to ramp down. So that is that. Then we have um, macrophage inflammatory proteins as well. So if we quickly want to take a look at those. So if you see here, macrophages also release MIPS, which are macrophage inflammatory proteins. In those, these two are very, very important, CCL3 and CCL4. Remember CCL3 were the one which are polymorphonuclear recruiter cells. So these are for the uh, WBCs to come over, these are for the neutrophils to come over. And CCL4, these are for the monocyte to come over. And do you remember why these are called CC? Remember cysteine, cysteine residue? These are the chemokines with the uh, cysteine, cysteine residues present on the end. If you do not know, please go back and read the chemokine types. But anyways, macrophages also release them. And finally, and very importantly, superoxides or the reactive oxygen species. Very, 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 very important thing. Reactive oxygen species are produced intentionally in these cells. Neutrophil produces it, macrophage produces it, and most of our cells produce that as part of our electron chain when that is working. Inside these cells, inside the phagocytic cells, which are killing the bacteria and the pathogens, what's happening is we produce superoxides. Remember, NADPH oxidase produces superoxide. Then we produce hydrogen peroxide. Then we produce nitric oxide. Then we produce hypochlorate and, and other halogenating substances. What are their function? These superoxides, these reactive oxygen species, do you know what do they do? Look at this. Let me just very quickly explain how do they work. So let's say we have a bacteria and that bacteria has a lipid membrane, right? So this is the lipid membrane of the bacteria, it's a simplified lipid membrane. In this lipid membrane, let's say it is attacked by a by a by an oxygen which is a superoxide, has an elect extra electron. This extra electron is going to attack this carbon, remove this hydrogen, so hydrogen is going to go out, we'll get H2O, and this extra electron is going to stick here. Now, what happened? What did this guy do? This, this radical, this superoxide species, this oxygen, reactive oxygen species, successfully transferred an angry electron from here to here. So now who has become calm? This thing has become calm. Who has become angry? This substance has become angry. What is this? This is bacteria's lipid membrane. So now bacteria's lipid membrane has gotten an extra electron over here. What is it going to do? There is a cascade of the chain reactions now. There is a chain reaction. This electron is going to keep moving until it finds an other area of the membrane. So let's say there is another area of the membrane which also has a similar extra electron. What is going to happen is this electron is going to pair up with this and these two 
parts of the membrane are going to fuse. So this is like a dent which is going to appear in the membrane because one part of the membrane got fused with the other part. This is the membrane deformity. This is what this reactive oxygen species do. Do they do it only to the bacteria and pathogens? No, they do it to our cells too. They say that a majority of our aging process is done because of the reactive oxygen species. NADPH oxidase system or NADPH system actually causes a lot of reactive oxygen species to be produced as well. So these reactive oxygen species when they are produced and they are poured over the bacteria that causes the cell wall damage, cell membrane damage of the bacteria that is how the bacteria is killed. That happens to us as well. Do you know how our cells prevent this damage or cure this, this damage? The vitamin, vitamin E. Vitamin E, when we take that, that vitamin E specifically goes and takes care of these, these damaged bonds formed or deformities in the cell membrane and cures them. That is why they say that this is important to take vitamin E to keep us less aging. So it, it's, a, it's a vitamin which would help us stay young and keep the cell membranes stay healthy. So that is the reactive oxygen species. So we've talked about that now and let's quickly see what we are left with I think we are really near the end one important thing was to see the enzymes so we do understand that we have NADPH oxidase we have superoxide dismutase the macrophages do not have myeloperoxidases neutrophils have them macrophages do not have them that is why macrophages cannot produce HOCl like substances macrophage has lipases which they use to kill the mycobacterium tuberculosis, but neutrophils do not have them. So these are the enzymes. Then very quickly, uh, the proteins on the surface of a macrophage. Let's talk about these proteins. Don't get scared. They're going to be a lot, but these are not too much. Remember CD14? We talked about it. CD14 is a protein present on the surface of the macrophage with the tall like receptor 2 and tall like receptor 4. What was the function of the tall like receptor 2? Tall like receptor 2 was helping a macrophage recognize the gram positive and yeast substances. And tall like receptor 4 was helping recognize the gram negative. This is a USMLE question. Do not forget that. Well, I've not seen the questions. I'm just saying that these are important questions over there. CD31. CD31 was such an important one. Remember, we talked about it that a macrophage, a macrophage and a neutrophil, <clears throat> they interact via CD31. Then the function of the neutrophil is to send a message to macrophage saying, hey, I'm healthy. If neutrophil cannot send that message because it is doing a lot of phagocytosis lately and it is not it does not have enough chemicals and machineries to actually send that signal, then the macrophage is going to engulf this uh, neutrophil and eat it up and remove it. So CD31 is very, very important for that interaction. Similarly, it has CD11, CD68. It has gamma interferon receptors, of course. Remember, we talked about it, that macrophage, macrophage would, re, would be secreting IL-12, then the helper T cells would, would be secreting gamma interferons. So, of course, it has a receptor for that. Then these are very important. These two are opsonins. Opsonins are those chemical substances. These are candies. So, bacteria comes into our body and we attach candies on that. And, and we start pouring the sugars on that. And bacteria says, oh, man, I'm becoming all sweet and nice and dandy. But it doesn't know that it's going to be the monster is going to come, the macrophage is going to come and it loves the candies and it's going to eat up the bacteria with the candy. So that candy is C3B, that is a complement, and immunoglobulin G. That immunoglobulin G is going to come from the B cells. We haven't talked about the acquired system yet, so we don't know how it would come from. But C3B and IgG are opsonins. What are these opsonins? As the pathogen comes in, we attach sweet stuff on it. That sweet stuff, that sugar coating, that candy is attached to that bacteria or the pathogen is going to make it so yummy for the macrophage. And macrophage has a sweet tooth for these things and it's going to come and eat them. So these are opsonins. And of course, so macrophage has a receptor for that. And we talked about the tall like receptors. So that is what we have in case of the 
میکروفیز سرفیس پروٹینس ناؤ دا لاسٹ 